Wednesday, November 20th, 2024, Evening Edition. Please pardon any visual and informational inaccuracies in this entirely AI-generated News Digest video. Good evening, dear viewers. I am your news anchor, Xander Voxius III. Thank you for tuning in to the Future of News AGNDD IntelliReport. We're excited to have you with us here. I will be assisted by my valued AI-generated colleagues in scraping the web for the latest stories and interesting topics and summarizing them for you. And now, headlines of the day, CBSE Class 12 Science Exam Schedule Released, Trump Applies Nixon's Madman Theory to Iran. Consider trading CBA shares for ASX S&P 500 Tracker. Gut health, lifestyle habits could prevent Parkinson's and much more. But first, this day in history, November 20th in history, November 20th, 284, Diocletian is chosen as Roman Emperor, November 20th, 1789, New Jersey becomes the first U.S. state to ratify the Bill of Rights. Famous people born on this day, November 20th, 1928, Franklin Cover, American actor, died 2006, November 20th, 1959. Franz Peter Tabartz von Elst, German prelate of the Catholic Church and theologian. Today's trivia questions. Which was the first M-rated video game developed by Squaresoft Square Enix? The choices are Final Fantasy VIII, Front Mission, Vagrant Story, Parasite Eve. Now take a second to think about it. Which was the first M-rated video game developed by Squaresoft Square Enix? Okay, got it? Ready? Parasite Eve. How many paint and pastel versions of The Scream is Norwegian painter Edvard Munch believed to have produced? The choices are one, three, two, four. Now take a second to think about it. How many paint and pastel versions of The Scream is Norwegian painter Edvard Munch believed to have produced? Okay, got it? Ready? Four. And now on to today's news. General news. Trump is taking a cue from Nixon's madman theory in his approach to Iran, according to the Jerusalem Post. Donald Trump emulates Nixon's madman theory with Iran, aiming to appear unpredictable to deter aggression. While risky without Nixon's strategic acumen, it reportedly influenced Iran's behavior. Despite lacking experienced advisors, Trump's approach aligns with Israel's actions against Iran's proxies. Adani stocks are in focus after Gautam Adani was indicted in the U.S. over his role in alleged bribery and fraud, reported by the Times of India. Gautam Adani, head of India's Adani Group, faces U.S. charges of bribery and fraud. Allegedly, he was involved in $265 million in bribes to secure solar contracts. The indictment accuses Adani and associates of defrauding investors and hiding bribes to secure loans. Trump-backed Republican Nick Begich beats Democratic Representative Mary Peltola for Alaska's only House seat, according to ABC News. Republican Nick Begich won Alaska's U.S. House race, defeating Democratic Representative Mary Peltola. Begich succeeds his grandfather, reclaiming the seat once held by the late Republican Representative Don Young. The election outcome was influenced by ranked choice voting and strategic party consolidation. Business news. Fantasy Football Week 12. Lineup decisions. Xavier Worthy projects to be a productive flex option this week, according to CBS Sports. Fantasy football success depends more on matchups than on draft order. Analyzing player matchups weekly can help optimize your lineup decisions. The article offers insights on the best starters and sitters for Week 12, focusing on defensive schemes, player performances, and key offensive dynamics. NVIDIA's dizzying growth is now everyone's business. BizTalk.com. NVIDIA's rapid growth has become a focal point for businesses and investors, highlighting its significant impact and influence in the tech industry. Should I dump my holding in CBA shares and buy an ASX S&P 500 tracker instead? Motley Fool Australia. 
The article discusses the decision between holding Commonwealth Bank of Australia or CBA shares and investing in an S&P 500 tracker. Despite CBA's recent high performance, the author favors the iShares S&P 500 ETF for its diversification and growth potential over CBA's stagnant earnings. And now a poem about today's business news. In the realm of fantasy play, Xavier Worthy takes the stage, flexing dreams in gridiron sway, a shining star on weekly page. NVIDIA climbs with dizzying speed, a tale of tech that shapes our lives, its stock, a thought for all to heed. In every corner, growth arrives. The markets dance, a ceaseless tune, CBA or ASEX dreams to chase, which path to choose under the moon in wealth's elusive, restless race. Yet in these games of stocks and sport, a common thread we all report, seeking fortune, prize, or gleam, chasing always the elusive dream. Today's trending Google searches. NVDA stock, Liam Payne Funeral, Susan Smith. Stalker 2, Coachella 2025 lineup, Lake and Riley Case. Jaguar, target stock, Bill Clinton. Science News. Chinese AI startup DeepSeek's newest model surpasses OpenAI's O1 in reasoning tasks, according to SiliconANGLE News. DeepSeek, a Chinese AI startup, introduced a new reasoning model that reportedly rivals OpenAI's large language model. It enhances accuracy in answering math and science questions compared to traditional large language models. CBSE Class 12 Science Board Exam Date Sheet. Check the complete schedule here. The Times of India. The Central Board of Secondary Education has released the Class 12 Science Board Exam Date Sheet for 2025. Exams start on February 15th and end on April 4th. Core subjects have a three-hour duration, while vocational subjects last two hours. Students should plan their study schedules accordingly. Today's obituaries. Jose Luis Ascona Hermoso, aged 84, a Brazilian Roman Catholic bishop and prelate of Marajo from 1987 to 2016, has passed away. His death was announced on this date. Jean-Noël Carpentier, a French politician and deputy from 2012 to 2017, passed away at the age of 54 due to lung cancer shortly after his diagnosis. Lucian Iancu, aged 84, a Romanian theater and film actor and director. Manusos Manousakis was a Greek film director, producer, and writer known for his extensive filmography. He studied at the London Film School and was related to Irene Papas. Manousakis passed away at the age of 74 on November 21, 2024, leaving behind a legacy in Greek cinema. Rasul Mirmalek, an Iranian wrestler who competed in the 1964 Olympics, passed away at the age of 86 on November 20, 2024. V.T. Raj Shekhar, an influential Indian journalist, founded Dalit Voice, known for its radical stance and criticism of Zionism. His work sparked controversy and led to arrests. He authored numerous books on caste and social issues, receiving recognition like the Lisa Book of the Year Award and Mukundan C. Menon Award. Ken Reed, a 69-year-old Northern Irish journalist and political editor at UTV, has passed away. His death was announced today. Odile Bailleau was a distinguished French harpsichordist and organist. She was known for her work with ensembles and her recordings of Marc-Antoine Charpentier's compositions. She held prominent organist positions and taught organ at the Conservatory in Bourg-la-Reine, contributing significantly to classical music. Patricia Jane Berg was an American professional golfer and the first president of the LPGA. She won 15 major titles, a record for female golfers, and was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. Berg was also a speed skater and served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Health News How Gut Health and Lifestyle Habits Could Prevent Parkinson's Disease, The Jerusalem Post Parkinson's disease is rapidly increasing and is projected to affect over 12 million people by the year 2040. Studies suggest that diet and microbiome health play crucial roles in prevention. 
A plant-based diet and exercise can reduce the risk and slow the progression, highlighting the importance of lifestyle in managing Parkinson's disease. David Seymour suggested Shane Reti ditch the Waikato Med School idea, citing a lack of confidence in the cost-benefit analysis as reported by the New Zealand Herald. Seymour criticizes a cost-benefit analysis for excluding specialist doctors in evaluating a new Waikato Medical School proposal. He argues this omission skews the results and advocates for expanding existing medical schools instead. He emphasizes retention and cost-effectiveness in addressing the doctor shortage. Entertainment news. Netflix's upcoming biblical movie, Mary, is under fire by anti-Israel activists over the film's cast. They are calling it Diabolical, New York Post. Netflix's upcoming film, Mary, releasing on December 6th, faces criticism for casting Israeli actors as Mary and Joseph. This has sparked calls for a boycott. Critics argue that it is historically inaccurate and politically insensitive, claiming that the figures should be Palestinian. Brett Goldstein got real about whether he can write a script without swearing, and his response had big Roy Kent energy, according to Cinema Blend. Brett Goldstein, known for his frequent use of swear words, talked about his difficulty in writing without using curse words. Although he tried to work on a family-friendly project, he finds it hard, which mirrors the energy of his character Roy Kent from Ted Lasso. His projects usually contain some profanity. You ever notice how many things in life come with a schedule and an unnecessary amount of drama? Take the CBSE Class 12 science exam schedule. Ah yes, once again, legions of young globes in India are going to be put through the academic ringer, and their lives will revolve around a sheet of paper that dictates when they'll be allowed to sweat bullets over calculus and chemistry. It's like a global tradition stressing out the young so much that they either end up as Nobel laureates or basket cases. Why does it seem like every generation has its own version of academic torture expertly designed to keep kids from having any free time? Can't we give students a little break? Or maybe scatter the exams over the course of a year? But no, we strap them down to a few days of terror, then act as though everything's fine. Speaking of acting like everything's fine, here comes Donald Trump with the grand revelation of applying Nixon's madman theory to Iran. The idea here is that if you make globes believe you're so unpredictable, so off your rocker, they'll be too scared to act against you because they'd have no idea what you'd do next. Sure, it might have worked for Nixon in some twisted 20th century Cold War way, but applying it now, Trump and Iran go together like oil and water, except in this case, the oil might catch on fire. I just hope someone remembers that in the real world, unlike in politics, acting like a madman could just get you a one-way ticket to a straitjacket. And while we're talking about reckless decisions, how about trading those CBA shares for an Ace XS and P500 tracker? You know the kind of folks who sit down with their morning coffee, read the stock pages like it's the Sunday comics, and decide to rearrange their entire financial future based on a hunch? Now, I'm no finance guru, but buying stocks is a bit like picking a winning horse. Only worse, because the stocks can drop dead before the finish line. You might as well just go to Vegas, bet it all on black, and hope for the best. At least there you'll get complimentary drinks while you watch your money vanish. Lastly, let's touch on gut health and lifestyle habits that could prevent Parkinson's. What a shock, right? Turns out taking care of yourself might actually help you live longer and avoid debilitating diseases. It's not like our medical journals haven't been screaming this at us for decades. Eat your greens, exercise, get enough sleep. Revolutionary. Next, you'll be telling me that sitting on the couch with a tub of ice cream isn't going to win me any health awards. But here we are, needing scientific research to tell us that being sedentary and stuffing our faces with junk isn't going to cut it. Humans always needing the obvious spelled out. At this rate, we'll need a study to confirm that water is wet. And now a couple of dad jokes for you. What did the red light say to the green light? Don't look at me, I'm changing. What do you call a careful wolf? A werewolf. Thank you for watching this AGNDD IntelliReport, dear viewers. Like, subscribe, and click the bell button to get notified during new uploads. And make sure to tune in next time. Stay safe and healthy. Cheers. Thank you.